So the Bible said, God now released information unto Moses how they are supposed to do it. How are we supposed to do it? He said, the night that I have determined from the first day of the month to the 14th day, prepare. Let every family join together. If their family is poor to have, that means poverty was not expected among God's congregation. So if a family happens to be poor and they cannot afford to have a lamb, let them join a family who has enough. That is where the sharing in Christianity comes in. Because it has been like that. Otherwise, if God wants all of us to be sustained under the millennia, a lot of people will perish because they don't have it. But we that we have, we must share. Are we together? So if the blood of the kind of being we want to use to make sure that the angel, how is it that this angel of death kills people and yet he sees the blood of a very fragile animal and he flees? So he cannot enter. That house is not under judgment when they see the blood. It's a respect to the commander-in-chief. Respect. Reverence. Because in heaven, when you talk about lamb, all of them know that it's a symbol of our Lord and our King. Please, are you hearing that? So even though Jesus has died and gone and this practice of killing lambs are, are over, when you go to the other people and other sorcerers and all of that, they still resort to this one. When somebody curses somebody and a spirit is working, they say, bring a lamb for Ujain Brabe Pata. Still, Ujain in the shadow no, has power over evil spirits to turn them away from a curse that they are operating with. Are you hearing me, somebody? The significant thing that I want you to keep here is this. Very, very important. Why were they supposed to eat everything in haste? That same night, everything should finish. Number one. As soon as morning hit, the king was going to give a command. Everybody should leave. Or oh, if you are a Hebrew person, a people of God, all of you leave Egypt at once. It was just a quick leave. Immediately leave. And they were going to be driven away in haste because the crown prince is dead. All the people who are firstborns have been trained to sit upon the throne. If in case Pharaoh is not dead, they are all dead. The chief priest, his son is dead. The astrologers who put their rod on the ground, if they are not dead, they are sons who are going to take, you know, take their position. They are dead. Even demons' firstborns are dead. So the people. The people who matter in the kingdom that if there was anything Pharaoh was going to call them and contact them and say, come and help. All their firstborns were dead. Fino everywhere. Pharaoh calls this one and says, I can't come. My firstborn is dead. He calls this one and says, I can't come. My firstborn is dead. So the, the man was frustrated. His own firstborn is dead. People, leave. And Moses said, if you don't, they are going to die. And now they are dead. And that is the sign that causes the devil, the enemy, to lose his grip over anybody he has held captive. Immediately. Please, are you hearing my boy now? That is how salvation is. The day you hear his voice, you don't harden your heart. Immediately he comes to live in your heart. So you skip the judgment of the word of God that has been pronounced upon the earth. It's a wonder, it's a wonder, it's a wonder, it's a wonder. Word of Life with the Lost General, Prophet John Anwachi. Good morning, wonderful viewers, and welcome to the Word of Life live broadcast with Prophet John Anwachi. And today, indeed, we have Prophet John Anwachi. Hallelujah, what a blessing 
it is to have these two great men of God here in the studio. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your presence here in the studio. We thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new this morning. We thank you for anointing your servants for such a time as this. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom of God in their mouths. Thank you, Lord, for giving them understanding, O oh God, into mysteries. Thank you, Lord, that the hearts of your people are open to receive your word with meekness. And we thank you that we're blessed by this word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sure you're as delighted and as ecstatic as I am to have these two, two great prophets of God here to bring us God's holy word. Hallelujah. You need to call someone right now, let them know that the Lord's servants are on right now, going to bring us a word from the Father's heart. They're going to be speaking words of power and words of life also into our lives this morning. So please do all to pick up your phone. And then also, even if you're watching us on your TV set right now, on Metro TV, please do well to go to any of our YouTube channels and then share the link so that others can be blessed with you. We're currently on YouTube on Prophet John Anochi, Prophet John Anochi, and then also on the Worldwide Word Television Channel. We're also live on Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and then we're also on apps um, on Android and iOS. For all of them, it's Worldwide Word television hallelujah um if time will permit we'll open up the phone lines and then you can call in to speak to the prophets of god and their number would be 0302-507-154 or 0540-996670 good morning to you the lord generals yes good morning apostle, good morning, apostle. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to have you two great prophets of god in here we bless and, god um you know the the name that the Lord gave is up to um, the Lord's generals. You, you truly are generals, and it, and it shows clearly in the way you teach the word of God, the way you minister the spirit, and uh, people are testifying to the glory of God, the amazing things that the Lord has used you to, to do. And um, yesterday we recorded so many amazing testimonies. Right there, the man of God um, taught the word, he spoke the word, and then he asked that if anyone had received a healing or a miracle, should step forward, and then people just kept thronging to the front, and um, it was just glorious. But I want you to, to kind of educate us when the season right now, and you know, as believers, we know it as the Passover, um, um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, um, as Moses um, called it, and also Passover back then, and Passover right now. So I want to ask, what is the essence of the Passover to the new creation? Is there any bearing? Because someone will say that this was something that the Lord gave to the Israelites. The Lord said in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy that three times in the year they would have a feast unto him. Exodus 23 from verse 14 downward. So now that we are in Christ, now that we're born again, now that we're under a new covenant, what is the place of the Passover to us as believers of Christ? So, Prophet John Taylor, if you please uh, begin with us. All right. Uh, greetings to your audience. Um, uh, we thank God for this day, mm -hmm. for even this opportunity to uh, be on this platform. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Apostle Chris, My pleasure, for, for the question. I think um, we Christians, or the Christian body, mm -hmm. cannot say that um, the Passover is for only the Jewish people. Um, because in the Bible, all the, I will, I'll be bold to say that the feast of God, because this is a feast, yes. right? So the feast of God have uh, two fulfillments, mm. actually. One that speaks of the, the Jewish people, the house of Israel, uh, the descendants of Abraham, and then to the future generation, the future people who will believe in the Christ. Mm. How do I say that? Because in the book of Deuteronomy, the servant of God, Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise a man like me mm. from among your brethren. Mm -hmm. When he comes, every word that he says, he's the one that you should listen to. Yes, and if, yes, if one does not listen to him, he shall be cut off mm. from his people. So this is a very important statement. Mm that when the Christ come, okay, who is the unifier, who unify the Gentiles with the Jews mm -hmm. together? Now, when the Gentiles come into the body, when he says he unifies, 
he does not just unify, he does not just bring Judaism and maintain Judaism. Mm -hmm. He brings the Jews and the Gentiles into him to become one people. Mm -hmm. And the barrier is broken so that they become, it's like a whole one yes, kingdom, one, one entity, one, one mm -hmm. yes, one, right? Yes, so then, whatever Jesus instituted, it does not only speak to those in Judaism who have come into Christ, but those of the Gentiles who have also come into Christ can also become partakers mm. of it. So that is why when we have the understanding that the Passover is is a mystery, right? When they practice it, mm -hmm. it there's a mystery behind it, right? Um, and sometimes I pray that the modern day Christians, especially the Gentile Christians will understand the event itself, what goes into the practice itself, mm -hmm. because the practice does not only speak of the uh, redemption from Egypt, but it also speaks of the uh, future redemption. Wow. I can, if, I, I, if I can give a scripture before sure. Prophet John comes in. You see, uh, I don't wanna go into the, the feast itself when they are partaking the food, but there is a scripture in the book of Luke 1, mm -hmm. verse 70, coming down. And in that scripture, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, mm -hmm. spoke profoundly when he was prophesying about the Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said something very important, which remember, he's, he's a man, he's a Jewish man. Yes. Okay, he's a Levi, living in Judah. Mm. And he was speaking of the Christ about their salvation. And he made no reference to Egypt, but he was making reference to a salvation. Mm. And Apostle, if you can read for us, I will help God's people understand yes, sir, it. Sure. From the 70s. Luke chapter 1, I read from verse 67. Mm -hmm. Now his father Zacharias mm -hmm. was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, yes. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, yes. for he has visited and redeemed his people, mm -hmm. and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Yes. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, mm -hmm. who have been since the world began. Mm -hmm that we should be saved from our enemies mm -hmm. and from the hand of all who hate us. Mm -hmm. 72, mm -hmm. to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, mm -hmm. the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, mm -hmm. to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, mm -hmm. might serve him without fear mm -hmm. in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Okay, that's it. So he spoke about that when they have been saved, and delivered from all their enemies, mm -hmm. that they might serve God, they might serve before God in what? In righteousness and in holiness. Yes. So the redemption in Egypt is one part of their salvation. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, we mm -hmm. know that they have been oppressed by different enemies. Yes. But this prophecy is that when we have been saved from all our enemies, mm -hmm. then we might what? Serve him yes. without fear, mm -hmm. In righteousness and holiness. Yes. And in righteousness is only through Christ Jesus. Yes. And holiness is only through Christ Jesus. Yes. So this man, Zacharias, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, I like how when you started from, filled with the Holy Spirit, yes. prophesied this. So it, the Passover speaks of the uh, past redemption from Egypt mm. and the uh, future redemption from all their oh, enemies yes. and their sins, okay. which now the Christians also come in. Yes. So when we are celebrating the Passover, even as the Jewish people do now, when they are reading their, their psalms of praise, part of their, uh, their activities, their feast itself, they have to read some psalms, okay? okay? When they read it, they read it and they talk of, the, they talk of remembrance. They speak of remembrance. Mm -hmm. The psalms talk about remembrance. Remembering where they were once okay. as a people of slaves or mm -hmm. a slave people. And also, the Psalms also speak of their future redemption when the Christ comes, the one that I talked about. So when the Christ comes, they believe that he's going to save them and he's going to pass over them and bring judgment to their enemies. Mm. Because after he saved them, he would judge the adversaries yes. and that they will serve him without fear in righteousness and holiness. Yes. So the Passover is about remembering their past, but also declaring their future what? their future salvation, mm. deliverance, that they will serve him perpetually all the days of their life, meaning even up to the millennium and past the millennium, mm. they will serve him all the days of their life, yes. which the Christians come in because we also, the Gentile Christians, I mean, 
comes in because they are also going to be before the Lord, serve him in fear. So this, this prophecy is key yes. to answering this question. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. And the Lord General Prophet John and Archie, do you have something to add regarding that? <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Mm -hmm. um, I greet all of you in the name of Jesus and our partners. God bless you so much. Partners of General Archie Ministries, God bless you. Yeah, Apostle, um, for me, when you read the Bible, okay, um, all the agenda of the Lord is communicated through um, this event, okay? So um, you will notice that there are three major um, festivals that God commanded the people to celebrate, yes. which, is, which was actually given unto them in, at the shadow level. Mm -hmm. Because remember, God wanted an offspring. When you read the book of Malachi, the Bible says God desires to have offspring. Yes. Offspring who are gods. Yes. Yes. Godly offsprings. And so where he will call them gods. Mm -hmm. Because of the righteousness and the nature of God that mm -hmm. they will be having. But the nature and the righteousness of God that they will be having will come through a son that will come, who is a Messiah that will come, who will give that nature and that life. Mm -hmm. So when you read the book of Acts 17, the Bible says that the divine nature is not something we talk about in terms of silver and gold or whatever. But the divine nature is talking about uh, the life of God mm -hmm. itself, okay? So the life of God that will come upon us, all right, was communicated in the symbols that were given unto a people, a people chosen mm -hmm. to house the symbols. So when they were practicing the symbols, mm -hmm. which was actually the shadows, it was to give way for the, or, the reality or the original to come. Okay. So that when the original comes, looking at the symbols, you can understand the way and the patterns mm. of the original. Mm. I, I hope you understand. Yes, now, for example, okay, if um, if there was no judgment, okay, meted out on the earth and the people of this world and the nations of the world, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be any need for Jesus to come and rapture out from here. Mm. Now, the idea that Jesus is going to rapture out from the earth means that there's going to be a judgment upon the earth. Yes. And if judgment is coming upon there, the people that God has chosen must not be part of that judgment. They must be raptured from here before the judgment is meted out unto a people. Mm. Now, so, but if the people are not ready to go to where Jesus is, how would they rapture, how would they rapture them? Mm. So the same scenario that happened in Egypt that was used for a people who were in bondage was actually like a demonstration of a people who will be in bondage in the world to come. Okay. So... So Egypt is a prototype of the world. Okay. If the people are in bondage in, in Egypt and there is a judgment of death coming onto the people, the people must be secured. Mm. The only security is Christ, the Messiah. So when people believe in Jesus and the Messiah, and that judgment, which is an eternal judgment, comes, because the eternal judgment comes to judge anything that is either in the soul or in the spirit. Mm. So any, any persons who functions in the spirit, so demons who have um, um, spirit, um, angels who have um, disobeyed God and become yes. demons and devils, principalities, they are spirits. Mm -hmm. How would they be destroyed? Physical fire can't destroy them. No. But human beings, physical fire can, can destroy them. But when it destroys them, they have the version yes. that cannot be destroyed by yes. a physical fire, which is their souls. Yes. But their souls also have to be destroyed. Because if the judgment is about destruction, mm -hmm. then it's coming upon both souls and spirit and also what? Physical yes. things. Yes. So all these dimensions must be destroyed. So how would the destruction come mm. and get these people and not get the other people unless the Lord becomes, okay, like, a, like somebody that houses them so the judgment passes over them. So anybody who is in Christ, the Bible says Christ was made to offer himself so that when judgment comes, because all have sinned and quashed mm -hmm. of the glory of God, and it's appointed unto men to die once after their judgment. So it is appointed. It is not a was. So it is still appointed unto mm -hmm. men to die once after their judgment. So if you want to skip that judgment that God has pronounced to destroy one more time everything in the universe, everything on earth, in heaven, and then everything under the heavens, you need to be in Christ so you mm -hmm. skip the judgment. Once you are in Christ, then the death, the pronouncement of that death destruction passes over you. Okay? Wow. 
Yes, it, you, it, it skips you, like it, it jumps over you. Yes. So that becomes a Passover. That is why Jesus is the Passover lamb. How do you discard a practice that has brought in Christ Jesus? Mm. Do you get my point? Mm, yes, yes. Definitely. A practice that has brought Christ Jesus as your Passover lamb mm. to be sacrificed in place of you mm -hmm. for you to get salvation mm -hmm. and his life. And leave it to the full on the earth realm. How do you discard that? And how do you think as a Christian that you are not a partaker of it? Mm. Something that has brought you that life. The people of old used to practice it. But Jesus, when he stepped forward, he became it. Mm. He, he did it to mm. demonstrate what they were practicing. Mm. So in actual fact, when we go there, that's where we begin to see the essence of that salvation that you have received. Wow. And how to handle the salvation that you have received. So we don't trivialize it. Because the people in the shadow never trivialize the Passover, what mm. they had received. Anytime they trivialize it, they went into serious bondage and they had, someone had to lead them to convert them again, to repent and to go back and then do the, you know, the work of the Lord that God had given them. Wow. That was what Wow. You know, was that, yes. So that means that the Passover is actually a shadow of a much greater thing. Because yes. from the explanation, it means that God was depicting what Christ will come and do yes. for all mankind through yes. the Passover, yes. which is a much bigger deal. Yes. Wow. And now, we see God who, when he wants to do anything on earth, we see him in the streams of the Bible. He begin to announce it mm. through the shadows of things. Okay. Either the prophets are prophesying. Yes or the things they are practicing, okay? You know, even when it comes to multiplication, mm -hmm. reproduction, replenishing, we see Jesus, we see God, who has actually demonstrated these principles. Even, even how trees grow and become, and they bear fruits, and the fruit in themselves have seeds, and then, you know, you can actually multiply. Just one seed you plant on the ground, can fetch you a lot of seeds in the fruits, mm -hmm. then you get the multiplication. It means that for anybody to multiply, you need to be matured and bear fruit for before you can multiply. Mm. But when people become Christians overnight, they want to multiply right now, mm -hmm. but they must mature first. Okay. When you mature, you bear fruit. Jesus said your fruit must remain. Then the fruit in itself has seeds mm. that needs to be cultivated again, but in a larger world measure so you can bear more fruit wow. but a lot of people want to just bear f uh, fruit mm -hmm. when they are in the tender age or when their plants are tender yes you don't expect mm. plants when they are tender to bear fruit why because they they are not matured enough to start mm -hmm. bearing fruits you won't even see any fruit on there because mm -hmm. it is not time for them to have their fruit wow. Wow. This, is, this is profound so one of so when the the, the word chest God declares the end from the beginning and from ancient times things yet to happen. So sometimes he declares them through these feasts and things that he puts in place. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. So why not? How can the, uh, the believer make the most out of this Passover? Because you see, the feasts that they were practicing were three feasts. Mm -hmm. Other feasts were within those feasts. Yes. The feast of the Passover has been fulfilled, which is the lamp, which is Jesus Christ himself in reality has come. Okay. Has come to die, saved us, and then we are supposed to feed on him until he comes back. Mm -hmm. So till Christ be formed in us. That's the word of God. Number two, they were practicing the Feast of Pentecost. It has also been fulfilled, which is the outpouring unto the people. Remember, in the time of the Pentecost, when the day was fully come, the Bible says they were together, his disciples. Yes. And he told them that they should wait for the Pentecost, the day. And then the Pentecost means that, you know, the Pentecost was kind of harvest that the people were receiving. But in, in effect, it was the harvest of the Spirit that will come upon everybody mm -hmm. so that the people will now be fruitful. Mm -hmm. Because when harvest comes, everybody is happy. Everybody goes out, you understand, yes. to eat and to be full. But the harvest was the harvest of the Spirit that came upon the people. Now, the third feast that they were practicing was the Feast of the Ingadrins or the Feast of the Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. That one has not yet come to pass or that one has not yet been fulfilled mm -hmm. in its reality. Okay. Well, it's going to be fulfilled later. Wow. So, yes. Because the two has been fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what the outpouring happened. The Passover happened. But the last one, nobody has any record that it has happened. 
in reality, I'm talking about not the shadow. Because everything in the shadow, you see it a fulfillment. So is that one supposed to happen before the Lord Jesus will come again, or that will be in the millennium? Yes, the gathering together happens at the last days unto the millennium. Because see, the feast was celebrated in, in sections. Okay. So that is what is that is what is going to be happening. Because it's the gathering together of the entire people of God together. Mm. That one even brings people who are foreigners to come and celebrate it. So this one will happen, it's in prophecy. The prophets have prophesied about it. When we go to the millennia, every year, every, wherever you are, whether you receive Christ or not, the people who have received Christ have changed. They have transformed, uh, okay, translated to be the same image and likeness of Christ. But the people who are dwelling on earth will all come together and see the Lord Jesus on the mountain. Mm. And then they will, they will also hear the, about the feast. They will gather together and hear the feast. And at that time, they bring sacrifices and things. It will be happening there. Wow. Because there's no event that has happened in reality after Jesus has come that depicts that you know, no. the festival of the tabernacles. The okay. tabernacles means the, you know, places where God dwells, the people that God dwells with in them. Mm -hmm. In that, in that, at that particular time, we will see truly that God, God definitely dwells in people. Mm. He has become like, do you understand? He has become their light. It's like, do you understand? In that particular moment, the Bible says, and I looked, there was no temple. Why? Because we were the temples. Mm. And Jesus was dwelling. There was a fusion. That is called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And that's the essence of that marriage. The fusion between Jesus Christ and us. Mm -hmm. We have become one spirit with the Lord. So we don't need, um, like Christians today, we have a body, different body. And Jesus is dwelling in our spirit. Yes. Now at that particular moment, people will see that our body, soul, spirit is all formed with Christ. They will see wow. his different body and they, they, that's how it is. Wow. So we all gather together and celebrate this feast with the Lord when He is present. Hallelujah. It hasn't yeah. come to pass. So to if you don't understand this thing and you're teaching the Word of God, you can be so wrong. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Prophet John Taylor, so mm. what are some of the blessings or what are some of the things that believers can expect from this feast of the Lord? Because the Lord, why does He even call it a feast to start with? And what can we expect? What are we feasting on? Or is it, is it the Lord who's feasting or we are the ones feasting and what can we expect as believers? Okay, thank you, Apostle, again. You. you see, in the Feast of God, there are some feasts that calls for the gathering of all the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bringing together of people. And this feast is one of them. Okay. Okay, actually the beginning. Now, what is the feast? Uh, Prophet John explained Passover, how God passed over so the judgment that was supposed to come upon Israel, God did not bring the judgment upon them. Remember that um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they served God. They had the law of God. Mm -hmm. What I mean is not the written law, yeah. the oral law of God. They mm -hmm. followed God by faith. Yes. But when the people went to Egypt, as time goes on, the Bible says that they became idol worshippers. Mm -hmm. They practiced the the worship of yes. Egyptians. the Egyptians. Um, but the mercy of God came because he made a promise to their fathers mm -hmm. that he would come and save them. So when God came, that judgment, if he, we were supposed to say death for everybody, it would have been for everybody because they were also practicing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But because of his mercy, his mercy, and he declared that you should do this if you sacrifice a lamb, if you do what I'm telling you, then when my judgment comes to the land, I will pass over you. Mm. So that sacrifice, the lamb, the blood that they put on their doorpost and all of that, mm. it is what caused God to pass over them. And that judgment was meted out onto the Egyptians. Yes. And but they had life. So life to one side, one people, mm. death to other, other people. Yes. So the Passover, what it means is their salvation from what? Egypt unto the promised land. He promised them, mm. but also brought life to them. Yes. In Christ, we have what? Salvation and we have life, as Prophet John was saying, mm. life. So what is the benefit? The, the first thing is we must understand the, the meaning of the whole feast. Yes. The meaning of the celebration is about salvation. 
That is why I said we look forward. We look, we look at, we remember what the, he did in Egypt, and we look forward to our future salvation. Mm. And that salvation comes from Christ Jesus. So Christ, who is our Passover lamb, Peter, Apostle Peter said it. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul also oh, said it. Yes. Christ is our Passover lamb. Yes. So if he's our Passover lamb, he be, as Prophet Joseph became our Passover lamb, mm -hmm. that means he's our salvation. And then the words of all the prophets truly match that he's mm -hmm. our salvation. He's the one that will save us from all our enemies. And yes. that prophecy that I read earlier is so profound that Moses talked about it, that the Lord will come and save us from yes. all our enemies. All the prophet prophesied that he will mm -hmm. come and save us. So when Zacharias said that, Zacharias was waiting. He was speaking about, actually, this prophecy is about the Christ. He was yes. talking about the one who is about to be, uh, that one, who Christ, who has come. Yes. That he's going to be the one that they are waiting for mm. to bring all this salvation thing to pass. Yes. So uh, the benefit for Christians in this Passover is that we remember where we were. Mm. We were in bondage, like Prophet John said. Yes. The word like Egypt, the word is symbolic like Egypt, and we were brought from the kingdom of darkness into what light, mm -hmm. the kingdom of his son. And then he gave us what his life, mm -hmm. and that life came from the shedding of, of the blood, his blood on the cross. Yes, so that's that imagery plays out in Egypt the lamb that was crucified. Mm -hmm. The blood that was they put on the doorpost and the lintel, the same blood has also what sanctified us and has cleansed us. And now we have his life and we have been saved by him. Mm. And as the Bible says in the book of Revelation, that the lamb, he was the lamb that was slain. Yes. Okay, so if the lamb that was slain, then we are we should be thankful. The better, we should be thankful for Jesus Christ. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Because we have his life. Yes. Mm. And that life is what causes us to pass from condemnation. Mm. If the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, it's a, a new creation, yes. the old has passed. And in the book of John, he says, I came, he who believes in me will have what? Life and have it abundantly. Yes. And he who believes in me has passed from condemnation mm. onto to what? Life. Onto life. Yes. So that condemnation is the Egyptian suffered, mm. which brought their death in the original, the fulfillment when the Christ came, we have been, he has passed over us and has given us what? Life. life. And we have forfeited Judgment. condemnation, yes. which leads to what? Death. death. Mm. So we are blessed people yes. when we continue to feed on what? Yes. Christ, yes. on his body, continue to feed in him so that all the purposes of God that he ordained for us before time will be will, will unravel in our lives mm. because we were brought here to fulfill a purpose. Mm -hmm. And together, uh, Prophet John was saying he's the head, we are what? The members of his body. Yes. So that we can fulfill a purpose and at the fulfillment of all things, Christ will be in us and we will be what? Amen. In him. Hallelujah. Which is the mystery of mm. Christ. Wow. And this is the blessing. It's, it, is, it, is, it is a more important for us to understand this, know this, believe it. Mm. Bec because without life, we are, we, are, we are nobody. Yes. So the life that we have received is, is precious than anything that anything anybody can offer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And man of God, as you're making a submission, you mentioned that as we keep feeding on him. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, want, I, want, I want us to get it um, clear. Mm -hmm. We know that Jesus yes. is the word of God who became flesh, who mm -hmm. became a man and dwelt upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So when you say as you keep feeding on him, are you referring to feeding on the word or feeding on his body and his blood as revealed in John chapter 6 from verse 48 through 58? Is it the communion that we're supposed to be feeding on or the word or both? It's, it's actually the same thing. It has the same meaning, right? Because mm. the word, uh, Jesus said, your fathers ate the manna. And they are yes. dead. And they are dead. Yes. But this is the true manna, which comes from what? Above. That one may eat of it and, and not, not die. What die. Right? So he is the, the bread of life. Okay. And he says, my words are life and they are what? Spirit. Spirit. So the, the more you feed on his word, the more that life, like you live that life of Christ mm -hmm. in you. And remember, the Bible says that we are spirit in a body. Yes. According to John chapter 3, he says, those that are born of the spirit are spirit. Those that are born of flesh are, are flesh. flesh. Now the spirit requires sustenance. And the sustenance is not the food of the earth. Mm. 
but the food of the spirit, which is what? The, the word, word of the living God. So when we feed on the word of God, we are feeding on what? Christ. But Christ gave us, he said, do this in remembrance of me, the communion. So it's a symbol. So it's a symbol of, of obedience. The obedience of what? Feeding on the word of the Lord. So when we do that, the, he actually said in uh, Corinthians, uh, the Lord says that when you continue to partake of my body, you proclaim my death till I, I come. come. Yes. First Corinthians 11. Yes, so yes. we are proclaiming his death. That means we are proclaiming what he has done for us. His death, okay. because his death brought us what? The life. life. So we are, we, yes. yes, and our salvation. So we are proclaiming it. So mm. every day we do that, we are making the world know mm. that we are truly for Christ. We are wow. proclaiming it to the world. So when somebody asks us, why are you partaking this? We are proclaiming his death. We are proclaiming what brought us our salvation, yes. what brought us the life that we have. So that is why even the Jewish people, when they are celebrating the Passover, right? They have the Passover, uh, they call the Passover Seder, and they have a book they read. And they must read, rec relay, or recount the, their past so that the children who are seated on the table will know. Mm. So it's like they must tell them how God delivered their fathers from Egypt yes. and brought them by his outstretch and mm. to the promised land. So they recount that story to them. So we also, when we partake of what his body, we are retelling, we are telling the story mm. of our redemption, our our salvation. Mm. To our that children. is how. Yes, to our children. So our children ask us, Daddy, why are you partaking of yes. this? Then we tell them That's of what thing, Jesus yeah. has done for us. Wow, profound, profound. Mm -hmm. um, viewers, I trust that you're being blessed by these two great um, servants of God. We're going to go on a short break. When we return, um, they'll continue and then they'll pray for the people of God. So stay tuned and we'll see you right after this break. Take my life. A tangible blessing has been falling upon you tonight. All things are possible to him who believes. If you believe, let your faith work for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This feast is about life and salvation. So the first is our word bring you out. The second, I will what? Rescue you, redeem you. And the fourth is, I will take you as what? My people. So when God takes a man as his people, that is where the man is not afraid of anybody. When Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, he says, let the name of my fathers be upon you. Yes. That is how he adopted them. So when God takes you as a people, his name is put upon you. It doesn't matter, demons, 10,000 demons that come. Hey. When they come, the one who has put his name upon you begin to speak for you, Amen. begin to ask for you. Amen. And tonight, he is already acting for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Light the world with the word of is a word of life with the Lord's General, Prophet John Anochi. Welcome back to the Word of Life live broadcast with um, the Prophets of God, Prophet John Anochi and Prophet John Taylor Anochi. Um, man of God, you are sharing something um, profound before we had to go on the break. So now I'm beginning to wonder, like the move of the Spirit. Um, people are looking forward to this morning's session and then this evening will be coming again. And then tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll crown it. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking, all the healings, deliverances, prophetic, like ministrations, is it part of the feast, or is it just because you are anointed as prophets of God? That's why these things are happening, or the kind of manifest presence we are experiencing. Is it part of the feast, as it were, or it is just because you are anointed servants of God? Apostle, if we look at even the pattern, which. Mm -hmm led to the Passover. There were a lot of demonstrations of God's benevolence power, yes. his yes. greatness, even before the people came out of Egypt. Okay. Now, and when they came out of Egypt, is when we have also received Jesus Christ out of the world. Yes. There was still demonstration of God's power through the wilderness. Mm. The provision of God's, yes. uh, God, the provision for God's people mm -hmm. throughout the wilderness. Do you, do you get my point? Mm -hmm. Even at a point when they encountered pythons coming to, or serpents coming to bite them, yes. there was also a deliverance, even though they were people of God already. Mm -hmm. And they had all been baptized under the water 
of cloud. Yes. Uh, uh, they've all worked under the water yes. which the bible talks about it when they work under mm -hmm. the cloud so, so once the people have been baptized you know th that symbols have happened mm -hmm. they still needed a kind of salvation or deliverance mm -hmm. let me put the word deliverance because the salvation means deliverance mm -hmm. but this deliverance is not deliverance from uh, bondage of slavery or sin like as it were yes. in relation to us but this is also redemption or um, salvation from an aggression external aggression mm -hmm. uh, against the very life of the people mm -hmm. as they are living and there were so many demonstrations of God's power mm -hmm. now what I want to say is that the, the Bible says you know but through Apostle Paul it, by the Spirit of God says that the, the kingdom of God is not in word only, so, but also in what? Power. In power. So it is, it is not, so anybody who is actually born again, you have received the spirit of God. You have received giftings of the spirit. Once you have developed and you have become matured, these are some of the fruits you bear mm. as matured people of God. So as you speak the word of God, you demonstrate what you are preaching mm. so that the people will believe and be saved. Okay they will believe and they will have whatever issues they are confronted because of their level of faith mm. and their level of growth. They will receive something that will cause them to rekindle the fire of God, Jesus, of, mm. of God or the Lord Jesus Christ in them. Yes. Yes. So it is a necessary cause. Mm. Yes. For every man of God to minister the word of God and minister the spirit power mm. unto the people. You are ministering to somebody who he has received Jesus by his sake. Mm. He needs to be healed. Yes. Do you get my point? Yes. So that the, the glory of God will be revealed. Wow. So it's like it's like Paul said and Paul lived. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, mm -hmm. he said, in from verse 4, for, for the sake of time, he said, yeah. and my speech and my preaching did not come with wisdom. persuasive words of, you, of human wisdom, mm -hmm. but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Okay. The reason is remarkable. He said that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yes. He wanted people's faith, the believers, their faith to be in the power of God, not the wisdom of men. Yes. Sometimes I hear preachers talk about um, people going um, after people who are doing miracles, healings, and they make it seem like all we need is the teaching of the word. Mm -hmm. But we, but the word tells us that God confirmed the words of his servant with signs yes. following. And, what, uh, yes, and wonders following. And so sometimes I begin to wonder what's Even going on. Even Jesus, Jesus Christ, when he came on earth, yes. his, he came on earth for his ministry mm. and to establish a purpose yes. or establish a covenant. The Bible says his ministry was attested to by signs and yes. wonders and miracles. Acts 2.22. God himself. God himself, yes. He attested to Jesus' you know, ministry by signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes. His apostles, the Bible says when he commanded them to go and preach the gospel to all nations, he said the Lord was working with them mm -hmm. and confirming their word with signs and wonders following. It is a proof that Jesus is with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you are working and preaching the gospel and there's no sign being confirmed by the Lord, it's a proof that Jesus is not with you. You are dry. Yes. You are speaking your own words. Yes. It's, it's by the wisdom of this world. Mm. It's sensual, it's earthly, it's demonic. Exactly. That's what I thought because I, I find it quite amazing that, and then people sometimes applaud such people who make it seem like, but well, the one Jesus came, he, he taught in the synagogues, he preached the kingdom, mm -hmm. and then he also healed, they say, cast out devils and all that. And Jesus, you know, is the example. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you hear the flesh of God applauds speaking, the flesh. Mm. The Bible says the things of the spirit are spiritually discerned. The flesh cannot know. Mm. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Yes. Mm. That is why these people, they work for death. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. peace. Mm. So you are bringing life and peace to the people of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why you can preach 10,000 words, but nobody is changed. Nobody mm. is saved. Nobody is transformed. Do you get my point? Yes. People are transformed. Their no testimonies power. are profound. Mm. People are saying that we heard the word and we have believed. Yes. We heard the word and we have been transformed. Our ministries have been transformed. Mm. That is the power that accompanies the word of God preached. Hallelujah. The Bible says the spirit of God, the Bible says, and Prophet John quoted it, in the book of John 6, 63, says the, the words I speak, life. they yes. are spirits yes. and they are life. life. What is the business of a man of God preaching without life mm. and without spirit? 
If there's spirit, there will be confirmation of signs and mm. wonders following. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Wow. Prophet John Taylor, do you have something to add? You have just a few minutes and okay. we'll have to pray for the people of God. Um, what I would say is the Passover, you know, as you said, is it just because we are anointed or it's just the word? But on the table of God, just the Passover itself, mm -hmm. what it's speaking of is the gospel. Mm. What is the essence? What is the essence of the gospel? Christ. Yes. So, partaking of the Passover is the preaching of the gospel. Because you declare what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. We yes. declare our salvation, and in the salvation is the life that we have received from Jesus Christ. So, the Passover is the preaching of the gospel. That's mm -hmm. why even their practice is that they have to tell their their families what God did for them, their redemption, mm -hmm. and in the speaks of the future. So. But the gospel in Isaiah 61, Jesus said he came to open prison doors, set captives free, mm. open blind yeah, eyes, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So you preach the gospel. How do you do that? You th these things wow. must follow. Yeah. You understand? And that comes by the power of God. Yes. So a lot of Christians who reject the power of God are those who say that me, I'm sent to only preach or I'm sent to only teach. But when you teach, which spirit is teaching? Is it not mm. the same spirit of God? Yes. Is it, is it not the same spirit of God which brings about the healing? Mm -hmm. So it's just that we sometimes we must we we show a bit of our not under, understanding the fullness or the full counsel of God yes. of what we are doing. Yes. So, but if we understand it, we will know that Jesus was a teacher. Mm. He was a healer. Yes. Jesus exactly. was a teacher. He prophesied. Yes. Jesus was a teacher. He did the works. Mm. He's the works of God. He says, he even the works devils. testify of me. Of me. His works. If you don't believe. Mm -hmm. The works itself yes. testify Fire of yes. Believe yes. for the works sake. Yes. 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 So yes. those are the works of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But sadly, we have just five minutes to go. And um, I want you to touch briefly on uh, the few services left. I know that in the morning by 10 a.m., mm -hmm. there will be some prophetic ministrations, the word prophetic, and then in the evening by 6.30 p.m., you'll be ministering. What can people expect tonight? Uh, Tonight, um, because it's the, it's the feast of the Lord, whatever the Lord wants to give from the table to his people mm. is what you give. But I know that whatever comes from the table of the Lord is going to be great. Hallelujah. Because if it is a feast about him, then whatever it's coming from his table is going to bring life to you. Mm. Amen. It's going to bring life to anyone you, 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 you invite. And I want to tell the people, if you are coming, mm -hmm. don't come by yourself. Mm. Come with your family. Uh, to uh, like yesterday, as you saw, we saw instant healings yes, when Prophet John was miracles. instant healing miracles. And I want people to come with faith. Hallelujah. We we have faith. Mm. We have the power of God is working in us. Yes. But we also we need the faith that you have. Yes. Because everyone who came to Jesus by faith was justified. Yes. So come with your faith. Mm. Come and see what Jesus is able to do in your life. Hallelujah. And you will not regret tonight. Mm. And Sunday too, we meet, right? Yes. Sunday will be the last service. So yes. tonight is going to be a night of miracles, a night of power, a night of glory. And truly, Jesus is, it is if it is a feast, you are going to be so full, mm. you might take some home. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Yes. Um, <laughs> Prophet John, I am... Um, do you have anything to add before you pray for the people of God? We have just about three minutes to go. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's important that um, we recognize, the Bible says that um, people came from all over the world, all over the regions around, mm. and when Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to, yes. to come to his services in the wilderness, and they were blessed. Yes. Many of them were fed, many of them were healed, many of them were delivered, many of them had their eyes open, many of them yes. blind eye open, many of them had their dead raised back to life. And so many miracles, signs and wonders happened. Um, when you preach the full counsel of the Lord and the accurate message of Jesus Christ or the message of the gospel, uh, signs and wonders follow the word preached. Signs and wonders will always yes. follow the word preached. So the people of the Lord should come and sit and hear the word of God mm. and also expect signs and wonders following the word of God Hallelujah. preached. Amen. Because many of them have testified in our meetings, several meetings yes, that we have done together. So many miracles mm. have happened. 
So let them come. This is the feast of the Lord. You have the understanding of the word of God and then you walk victoriously over the antics of the devil mm -hmm. and have signs and wonders following your life. Amen. It's Amen. important. So come and be blessed. Amen. Now we have just a minute and a half if you please pray for the people of God. Okay, Father, we honor you. We thank yes, you. We Lord give Jesus. you all the praise in the name of Jesus Lord Christ. We thank you for their lives. Yes, we Lord. thank you that, Father, the sick is healed. Amen. Amen. We thank you that deliverance, we speak deliverance yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Curses have been broken Amen. because of the blood of Jesus, yes, the efficacy Amen. of the blood, the power of the blood Amen. that speaks better things in the lives of the people. Amen. It speaks into your marriage. Thank it speaks you, into your relationship. Amen. It speaks Amen. into your finances. The blood speaks mm. to order your life. Amen. Every disappointment is canceled Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Receive grace Amen. to function in the vineyard of the Lord. Yes, Thank you, my Father, for your power. Amen. If you do not know Jesus, this is the opportunity to know Amen. Jesus, Amen. to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And your life is never the same. God bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now you've heard the two great prophets of God. I want to invite you to join us even this morning. If you can make it, we're starting at 10 a.m. Here at the Ministry Auditorium, number 14, Boundary Road, East Ligon. You can just enter Worldwide Word Ministries into the map. It will bring you straight here. And then in the evening, we'll start by 6.30 p.m. And then tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll start at 8.30 a.m. Do well to join us and we'll, you'll be blessed. Every Thursday also, we have the Global Prayer Palace every Thursday. Great time in the presence of the Lord, where the man of God will teach the Word and then lead us in prayer and then minister by the Spirit of God, hallelujah. We've seen many mighty deliverances, we've seen healings, we've seen people testify financial miracles and all of that. So every Thursday at 5 p.m., make a day to the Lord's General Prophet John Anotri at the Global Prayer Palace, and you'll be blessed. You can reach us on 0302-507-154. Also, you want to consider becoming a partner of this great ministry. This is the Lord's agenda in these end times, and the Lord will richly reward all who partner with his agenda in the earth realm. If you call any of those numbers, you'll be taken through the process and you'll be blessed. God bless you so much. Join us same time next week for another powerful episode of the Word of Life Live broadcast with Prophet John Anochi. We love you so much. Jesus Christ is Lord. Enjoy your weekend. Light the world with the Word of Life. Word of Life. This is a Word of Life with the Lord's General, Prophet John Anochi. We trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanochiministries.org, www.worldwidewordministries.org, or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anochi Ministries.